Oh, okie dokie. Yeah, it's just a, well, hopefully a quickie, because I am going to probably be a chatty Cathy, um, you know, trying to make a video while I'm at Can Games and probably do like a little recap for every um, evening. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I won't go berserk. Um, yeah, it went well, the pocket battles thing. We ended up having six people showing up to play. Actually, um, well, originally it was just going to be five. And then there was a repeat offender, Ryan. He's, I think that may be a, his fourth time playing. Um, which was great for me because uh, that meant I wasn't playing, which, so I could hover, I could go back and forth. There was, you know, three groups, which was nice. Um, yeah, he was actually not, he was like, oh, uh, do you mind if I, is there like, you still got some extra spots because the game I was going to uh, play um, got canceled. I was like, yeah, I'll pop on in. So that was good. I think it went well. Uh, well, it went well for me for the remainder of the time playing Pocket Battles. I can tell you one thing, because uh, the guy, he's going to end up getting the certificate. Uh, the person that's, uh, you can get a trophy or whatever. You don't have to do that stuff, but I'm always like, hey, man, give somebody something. Um, he looked up, a, asked about a certain rule, and when he mentioned it, I went, oh, my God, I've been playing it wrong all this time. It essentially was that um, certain uh, units have abilities you can um, shoot from long range. And one of the things that uh, somebody can do as a reaction, even though it isn't your turn, if they go to engage, as in move uh, towards to do close combat, if you have the uh, ability, in other words, you have somebody that can shoot and you've got enough orders left to do it, you can opt to uh, use a reaction. You still cost him uh, like an order or more. Um, and you can shoot at that unit that's about to engage. Well, lots of people in the way I've been playing it is some units have long range ability. So we keep them in the reserve in the, in the back and you shoot. You're allowed to shoot over, your, uh, over the guys that are coming into the engagement. Um, so that's what we've been doing. But it's... Uh, that, uh, anyways, Nathan noticed that he's like, um, are you sure about, look, can we take a look at that again? And it actually specifies, it says, right, oh my God. And um, it everybody that I've been playing with as well, of course, I'm probably the one dying from the rules, so they're going to go and um, do it my way, is that it can only be used actually in your turn. It cannot be used uh, to... Um, uh, as a reaction. Um, so that was nice. That completely changes the dynamic, well, especially for the Celts and the Romans. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, that would be mo monster. So it went well. Everybody seemed to have had a good time. Obviously, there's different personalities. I'm trying to get them engaged. You know, if I'm noticing that somebody is not, uh, seems to not be, you know, like kind of tuning out, I try to go and see them and I'm like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. How are you doing? Whatever. There were some monster bloody battles. Oh my god! There was actually one guy, uh, Danny. He was. Uh, he's like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm normally, he goes, I'm the worst die roller in the universe, and everything's going well this time. I was like, well, it's a three day event, so hopefully it'll just keep on trucking for you three days. Yeah, he was. I was like, what? Um, it, two of the three encounters were just um, ongoing battles. There, uh, he they were playing. Hold on here. They were playing the Celts versus the Romans. He was the Romans. Just rolling crazy rolls. It was just like, you got to be joking. Um, and the uh, elves versus orcs. Uh, Nathan actually was the uh, elves. I was shocked. He was doing really, like, impressed. He destroyed the troll in the first... Oh, I Anyways, that guy, I, I said to him actually at one point, I said, Nathan, because he was asking me questions about uh, later on after he had, we were just like winding down. And I said, Nathan, man, you should be schooling me in this game, <laughs> not the other way around. Like you're like I even said to him way before then, I said, thank God I'm not playing because you'd be kicking my ass, man. It was it was a lot of fun to see this. And then after that, I mean, I, I got the chit chat with a bunch of people and I still will later on. I mean, it was nice to talk to Garth and uh, some other people. I was like, oh, my God, I remember you from like at the very end. Actually, I was just um, uh, getting ready to leave. I was right beside my bicycle. And I said to the guy as he was coming back in, I said, oh, my God, Wings for the Baron. You were playing Wings for the Baron last year. That's why I remember you. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. So we talked quickly about that. And I was like, what a bummer. It's not being, I don't see it being run this year. 
maybe it is. I'll have to take a look at the screen. And he's like, oh, are you playing pocket battles again? And I said, well, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, but he said, well, if you're around, we can go to the free area and play there. And I said, okay, I'll bring, bring one in. Why not? Um, then I just took a quickie wander around. Uh, yet again, mentioned to Bob, but he was like, you're, don't worry, I'll tell everybody about uh, the Great War. Of course, I talked about the Great War with anybody I could. Um... Then I wandered around, and uh, not all the vendors are open, but I was like, okay, I've got to be strategic. You're a bike bike user here, Chris. You can't just uh, go, oh, I want to, you know, buy all these things at once. I can't. I can't do these things. Um, so these things, I'll start off. I bought uh, these things, actually, from uh, the same person. Uh, they were the Independent Publishing Revolution. In, uh, sorry, Indie Press Revolution. And they basically, I guess, find a bunch of, I don't know how it works exactly, maybe because this is happened upon and it's a different, uh, they're published by Wet Ink Games. Anyways, I'm yabbering away with her. She's like, blah, 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 about, you know, all the different RPGs that they, and she's like, you know, when we started, there was, you know, now there's 78, you know, like we had to pick and choose which ones we're going to bring. I was like, holy cow. Anyways. So uh, we'll start off with this and we'll get to that. So this was like, I was like, they call them mystery dice. I've never even heard of these. If you guys, it's called um, uh, factory second dice, dice that are effed up. Uh, like a lot of my counters that I've made over the years. Uh, anyways, um, so the mystery dice, I didn't know what I was going to get. Well, I knew the size that I was going to get. And I was like, these are the perfect size that I use for bucket of dice games type of things. So at first I was like, I don't know if I really like these dice, but they're really weird, funky. I like them. I can see now what, what, what they are. It's the, I guess they're supposed to be all like full on pure black and some of them aren't. They're a bit grayed out and whatnot, but they got a weird feel. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm all right with this. Uh, no, these are like, I probably normally would not purchase these, like a smoky type. I'm very into contrast. Oh my God, you should have saw the D, one of the D4s I saw. It was God awful. It was, I've never seen it, because they were selling uh, separate dice as well. I've never seen such a poorly contrast uh, between, uh, oh, it was just, I was, I even said to her, I said, Oh, that's got contrast issues. She's like, oh my God. Now, this, of course, you always get a, well, not all the time, but you usually should get a, um, your complimentary uh, can games die. This one's an interesting one. Uh, I like this size. I've always liked this size. I don't know if it's 15 millimeter. It's certainly, it's not 12, and it's certainly not the big honkers, but it's a little bit bigger than this one, which was, uh, I sat down randomly at some spot to take a look at my, uh, my little uh, schedule book there, and lo and behold, this was just sitting beside it, uh, me kind of thing. I just popped on over and went, what the hell? Uh, this is the intro, uh, well, like I said before, I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, my boss loves blue. She just loves blue to bits. And I was like, well, I love giving canned games dice to people. And um, I was like, oh, I gotta find her a blue die when I'm there, a special blue die. She's into like um, Hollow Taco, this, um, uh, and it is. It's amazing. I was like, holy cow. When I saw the fingernail polish that you can get for Holo Talk from Holo Taco, like you can do this magnetic stuff and use a magnet and make them... And it was all kinds of crazy ass shit. And uh, I was like, whoa, I can... See, like, I almost want to wear fingernail polish. Um, this kind of got... Anyways, it's going to her, obviously. So that's that. And anyways, like I said, I'm chatting to the way with uh, the person about RPGs and so on and so forth. And I said, well, I'm, you know, really into the Great War, World War One, And uh, she said, oh, but we don't have any of that uh, stuff as far as I know. And I saw this and I went, I don't know. I said, uh, not to be, you know, I'm uh, probably know a little bit more about the Great War or whatever about you than you. So I'm not trying to, you know, whatever. But I said, uh, this kind of does look. World War One-ish, so I'm, I'm gonna peruse, man, I'll take a look. And, uh, <laughs> oh my God, uh, I I saw this second, but like when I was there, I went, uh, well, she didn't understand what I meant. When I went, uh, I was like, oh yeah, don't worry, I'm like, Central Powers, I'm looking at her like, hint, hint, and she's like, not getting a hint. Uh, but I'm like, okay, that's when I was like, okay. Uh, Allied Powers, No Man's Land, I was like, we're there, man. We're there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, obviously I brought it home. I was like, and they had, this is the funny thing I even said to her. 
She, I said, uh, I said, yeah, this one's coming home. Yeah, and she's, and she's like, oh yeah, there's a supplement. I said, I'll take a quickie look at this and see if I need the expansion. I don't know. Um, then I saw this. After, when I got home, I went, you've got to be effing kidding me. Uh, the setting is the real earth and the characters are all humans. The first world war, never going, you know, it's just like, oh, right. Never going home is about a game set in the horror haunted trenches during the first world war. I don't know what in the world. Uh, tough. I'm going to, oh my God. Yabba dabba. I think I'm going to have to get the expansion. I think I paid like 30 bucks or something like that, but, uh, oh yeah, baby, look at that, look at that, holy shoots and ladders, um, it's almost like Stranger Things meets, uh, World War One, man, okay, and this is just on a side note, I was talking to, uh, Stephen, uh, one of the, uh, the people was playing, um, Pocket Battles, and you hear Tidhead downstairs, and, um, uh, yeah, he was talking about uh, World War II, World in Flames, and so on and so forth. We got a little bit into this. I said, no, I, but he's been playing this ongoing uh, thing. Uh, World in, so it's nice to talk to somebody about monster stuff and what have you. Okay, I need to obviously uh, uh, shift gears here. I need, well, I have to go and tell Tidhead to shut up. And then um, uh, that's Leo, as you can imagine. He's Mr. Whiny. I don't know what the hell. Oh, he's just a whiny cat. Uh, this is, well, this is, some cats are meowing and some aren't. And he's one of them. Um, yeah, I gotta go downstairs and do the headlines. War summary. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I was talking to Steve at the Great War uh, about the Great War and whatnot, and you know what I get up to, and he's like, "Well, what do you do about it?" And and I said, "Well, I don't know. blah blah blah, live stream." This, that, and the other thing. And he's like, and you have a full-time job? <laughs> ah, ah. I was like, yep, yep, I do, man. I don't uh, I do not do much else, really. It's like, uh, it, that gets in the way. But I told him, I said, I'm addicted to spending money, so I have to keep going until I can figure out how to stop doing that. Uh, I can then devote 100% of my time towards the Great War and uh, my exploration and whatnot. But until then, got to do what you got to do. All right, that's it. Hope you're having a great old time. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to go do my stuff, rest for a bit, and go back to um, that beautiful place. All right, see ya.